it was kind of all over the place and in and, in and, and not in a judgmental fashion just if we don't know oh and i remember thinking like well i could probably do a little bit of research here and figure out some things because you know this organization could do a lot of good they just need a few little you know a little bit of you know some resources a little bit of money a few little clubs here thing this could go let me dig into this and so that's how i began digging into kind of understanding the backstory if you will with golf and the organization of golf and that type of thing and long of the short it led me to uh, getting building some relationships with some people who were in the industry so the core of myself let's see that's i guess it's a, getting a longer and longer story with each day that god blesses me but my name is obviously dr Greta anderson and i am a lifelong lover of two things sport and learning and so as we kind of look at the, the arc of my life thus far it that's really what it's been about um I help people. I enjoy helping people learn and learn effectively because I know that that's just the gateway to a great life. But also in the in the context of sport, it's the same thing. We can all love sports and participation in sports. But when we know what we're doing, we know how to navigate that field, whatever, whatever field that might be. It's more fun. And so I kind of marry the two because learning is the process of learning is very similar whether we're sitting in a classroom or we're out on the golf course and so that's what i do love it that's such a great thing to hear and you know it's one of those things where we find out that our passion meets whatever we're doing then it becomes enjoyable because i used to hear those saying a lot and i believed it totally when people say if you do something you love you'll never work a day in your life and for me, I'm like, no, nah, I'm still working. <laughs> Just, I'm still putting in sweat, but yeah. I'm passionate about it. So I enjoy it more and um, things like that. So. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here again to another episode of J1Q, the podcast that is directly dedicated to bringing inspiration, dedication, and helping you scale from where you're at to where you want to go. I appreciate all of my J1Qers out there, and thank you especially for being here. Yes, you. My wife always tells me if no one was listening, I probably would still be talking, but I appreciate you for listening because that makes it more enjoyable. Today's guest we have coming on, I told you a little bit earlier, is Dr. Greta Anderson. I'm extremely excited about this because I know nothing about golf except what I have watched. And I love learning new things. And, you know, I, some of my listeners even messaged me and said, but you, when I did the intro, I said, but you live on the golf course. Yeah, but I've never played it, but I'm going to go get a putter. We talked about that earlier, Dr. Greta and I. But that's one of the most important things to have in that bag. And I'll, I'll work my way up to getting extra pieces, right? So what, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and jump right into it with my guest, Dr. Any Anderson. Any hello, how are you doing? Hello, hello. It is so nice to be here. I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for being here. It's, it's, it's one of those things where I love pushing my boundary. Right? When I first started this podcast, I was just like, you know, oh, let me just do it. it. It was helpful. It was therapeutic. And then as I started doing it more, I saw that people were like listening and reaching people. I was like, well, I could bring other messages on because for my whole concept, and everyone knows my, my podcast is dedicated to black and brown and minority and underclass people. But I also believe that I don't care who brings the information. If it helps out my people, then I am grateful for it. Right. And so I love that. So let's get started. We're going to be talking about because I, I quoted the episode and I might change this. So if you're listening to this on Monday, um, it might be a little different. But I quoted it mastering the green and the boardroom. <laughs> I was like, I okay. hope no one, you know, I hope they get the little play on words there. But sometimes I outsmart myself, I think. But we were talking earlier and you said, um, you know, you, your business aspect and how you trans, you know, for everything. It's business and it's a golf. And they're basically one part of your world. Can you kind of touch slightly on both of those? And then we're, we're going to primarily go into the, the, the sports part of it. But let, let's hear what you have to say on 
uh, that issue. So I think, Leon, I think what you're referencing is um, probably my our, our, our great conversation earlier when I was speaking about how golf is the sport of business. Is that what you're referencing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So golf, literally, I mean, we know golf comes with a lot of frankly baggage right we know that particularly for people of 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 a of a darker hue right we weren't always the most welcome golf is can be prohibitive in many ways and we're certainly i know that i am actively working to help change that to evolve the sport but golf is an amazing tool and and i like to speak to people who may not yet be involved in the game to appreciate and understanding as I appreciate and understand golf as a tool. It is a skill, but it is also a tool. There is a reason that golf is the sport of business. We are in the digital age and we do all kinds of things using, you know, technology, but golf is still the sport of business. People who play golf make more money, whether they're in business for themselves, but and particularly if they work in the corporate environment. There, there are a bunch of reasons for that. One of the reasons being is that Golf is, is the one opportunity where you get uninterrupted time. And, and, and in today's world, you know, we're always getting interruptions, right? You know, we pick up, you know, you, we don't go anywhere without one of these. We're always online. Everywhere you go, there's a TV, there's a screen, but not on the golf course. And so the, the connection that golf creates among golfers, which is, I won't say weird, it's almost magical in many ways. And I know that sounds ethereal and all that good stuff but it really is it's a it's just a powerful tool and and we can go on and on and i can go in depth about it but i always encourage people here's the thing i'm not you know i'm not inviting you unless you want to to aim to be you know a tour professional but to know the game to understand stand the game and be comfortable enough to use it a part of your your you know your business or entrepreneurial toolkit is a powerful option you know, it's one of those things when you say that and you were talking about the ethereal thing, and I, I hear this so often from people who do play it, right? Because um, I live in a golf community, and every morning I see people. It's so funny because we have golf carts just on the road and everything. <laughs> and I yeah. tell my wife, I'm like, you know what? If I even if I don't play golf, I'm gonna get a golf cart. Just, just carts are pretty cool, aren't they? Carts are pretty cool, and they, just, they got some fancy ones and everything. Oh, and I love it. Tricked out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but one thing I hear about it, because you were saying that relaxation, that they, they, they don't have that phone out there, and it's intentional, right? It's almost like that, hey, this is my time away from technology, my society, or whatever time frame, you know, we're out there as I talk to my neighbors and stuff. It's almost like just a peace of mind. And I think for me, it would frustrate me because I'm just like, Man, not not even a fact of I can't get the ball in the hole. Let's let's or it goes into the marsh or whatever, right? I think for me, it would just be the time factor. But I can also see it being for some people out there who want to use that in a way to go to a peaceful place. You know, what are maybe any tips or any ideas you have for someone who is saying to themselves, "I may not want to be on tour, but I think this is something I could, you know, kind of get into." Sure. Right. It is one of those things you can get into. And the beauty of golf is that golf is always here for us. And, and I, and I, I have a, a you know, a, a full-time practice. So I teach a lot of people and it's always interesting, you know, at least, you know, a couple times a week, I have a client, uh, you know, perhaps a new client and they will mention, well, I had every intention of getting started or I got these clubs and, you know, we found out we were pregnant and so now I'm back and I'm like, oh, congratulations. And, you know, how old is the baby? Oh, the baby's graduating from the University of, you name it, next week. 20 years, but golf is there. Now, a lot of sports, we can't say that. And that's one thing I love about golf, right? Golf fits in every phase of your life. And lovingly, I often call it kind of the, if you will, the, the transition point for all athletes, because on the golf tee, you're going to meet former players of every sport under the sun. Everybody unites at a certain point on the golf tee, which is another one of the things I love about it. I don't care if it was football, if it was the world's football, soccer, basketball, tennis, lacrosse, 
at some point, so many of those people are coming to the golf lesson tee. And so it's, it's fun because it is a sport that teaches us patience. It teaches us resilience. It teaches us perseverance. Yet at the same time, it's a, it's a great challenge. It's a personal challenge. It is the one sport that even if you are playing with other people, you are not playing against those people. It's not an adversarial sport unless you choose it to be. And you can't say that about any other sport. You aren't going to be on the offensive line in football and just offending, you know, going against yourself, right? Baseball, you're playing against someone. Tennis, there's someone on the other side of the net. Golf, we're all together. We're just playing together unless we choose to put, you know, uh, incorporate that factor into it. But that's, that's another reason why it's a sport of business. We can, we can walk and talk and play, but we're not against each other. We're, we're just playing together. Yeah. One of my mentors um, would always tell me, he's like, I do more business transactions on a golf course than I do in a boardroom sometimes. And I think eventually I started to understand what he was speaking about, but it's like you're saying, we're not, directly against each other but maybe you're in a manufacturing industry or you're in whatever other industry like you said sports and now like oh hey look uh, you're networking in a sense right it, it's that little, absolutely yeah over something absolutely. that you guys love yourself together absolutely. and that what makes it so exciting and so now can you kind of share your story? Because I know there's some people out there, and I, I saw a question that come up, and we'll probably get to that in a sec. Well, actually, I'll just go ahead and um, kind of mention it. Someone wanted to know, what would you recommend as a starting point for someone who wants to learn the sport? And I guess I was going to tie that into what I was asking you. Can you tell your journey into it? Because someone might be thinking, oh, you were athletic already. You had you know, what it took, but can you kind of share that and maybe answer that question as well? Sure. So I love sports. I, you know, I just, I, I kind of have this fixation. I guess that's at this point, I guess that's what I can call it. Right. I love, I love seeing the ball. I love seeing the ball, but that's neither here nor there. I began playing golf very casually. I was not, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that for many of us, the golfers that we've met, they, that are, that are, are, you know, proficient in the sport. Oftentimes it seems like they've been playing forever. You know, they're a member at a fancy club, all of those types of things. I picked up a club as a kid, but very casually. I prob I'm going to guess if I think hard, I mean, I probably picked up a club maybe a few times a year. I, I mean, very infrequently. I was a tennis player. I grew up playing competitive tennis. So golf was something I picked up a club. My dad has played golf most of my life. Um, you know, obviously he was busy with his career, raising a family. So he didn't have a lot of time to play golf, but I would sneak around to the driving range with him and he would go. Most of the time I was just hanging out with my dad, not playing golf. So I was around, for it. But, but it wasn't until I was in my, you know, I was in graduate school and I began to kind of have a little bit, you know, kind of see mm, this could be kind of fun, but I, like, again, I like striking a, I like striking a ball. So I like to strike a ball and make it fly. I like doing that. Hence the tennis, hence the golf, that type of thing. And it was, as I got into graduate school, I began playing a little bit more playing, you know, with frequency and, and, and said, you know, let me kind of spruce up my skills. And when I got into my corporate career as a young consultant, a young researcher, that the value of skill set became apparent. I wasn't even thinking it was that big of a deal. My uh, director at the time was kind of in a jam and she needed someone to go play in this event with one of our big clients. And so she was like, I remember she walked in and she was like, does anyone play golf? And I was like, well, I mean, you know, I can bounce it around a little bit. And she was like, okay, great. You're off to, I think we were out, out West or something like that. And I'm like, okay, fine. Well, we won the tournament. I played with the client, we won the tournament. And that was the career changer because I remember her coming back and going like, why didn't you tell me that you played golf? I was like, cause you didn't that. I mean, I had never thought about it. And as a, I mean, as a junior consultant, I remember my, my, those, all of a sudden my assignments changed. I mean, I was happy. I mean, I was enjoying my job and everything like that. But I remember my, you know, that first couple of years I, I like had an assignment. I think I was like, literally this was January and I'm like in South Dakota good project and everything like that. But then your boss realizes you can play golf and all of a sudden I'm beach. I'm, you know, 
things changed, you know, Doral, you know, life changed. And so the ability to use that tool to just to have conversation, to create dialogue, to build relationships with clients, prospective clients, to be kind of in that seat where my boss could then just do the talking, the deal while I hit the ball. Hey, it was, you know, it's, it's teamwork. And so it's a business tool and a skill. That's why I always say like, Hey, I'm not, I mean, it's that, that, that put me in positions where I wouldn't be as a young professional, except I had that skill in my, in my tool set. It's just as if I was fluent in a, you know, you choose the language and we needed to have meetings or develop client relationships in that, the country where that was the, the native tongue. You're going to take that person, right? You're going to be on the team. Same thing. Hearing these stories like this is, it, it, for me, it's almost like painting a picture. It's like I'm getting to see and to hear. But what, when you're talking it, I'm like, yep, I can see that, right? Here you are um, out on the course and you're doing what you do and you're still conducting like it's business, it's a business, but you're still conducting this, this everything that's going on. Sure. But as you're talking it, I'm, I'm just like, sure. oh man, I, I can, I can picture that, I can paint it, and, I, and it's almost, I think, <laughs> this is crazy. I think it's like a calling for me because I was just thinking about it when we were talking earlier. When I was living in Las Vegas, I lived on a golf course. When I moved here, I lived, on, and, and these are by chance. I, mm-hmm. but it couldn't, and maybe it might not be. Cause now I'm living on a golf course now, and I just or is it? found out, yeah, it, right, because I used to live in Augusta. And I used to live or by, not at that point, yeah, I didn't right live there, on a golf course, but I lived by a um, golf course. And then back then, I had no idea what it was. But yeah. I, whenever April time frame came, mm-hmm. man, that city was so hype. And I was like, what's going on here? Is there a concert or something? Yeah. <laughs> but it was so crazy. So then mm-hmm. you, you got to mm-hmm. a point and a level where you started to figure, mm-hmm. I guess, I've got something here. When was this point that you said, you know what, let me try to see if I can transition this into something that I can take into like maybe in a business kind of mindset. Did that happen right away or how did that work? Well, it didn't happen quite. uh, It was kind of a gradual process and, and, and interestingly, I won't say all at once. It was just kind of upon me, but it kind of, worked its way in. And so I was, by this time I'm playing golf, I'm enjoying golf. I was still also playing a competitive tennis. I was still playing tennis at, at, at the national level. I, I love tennis. Tennis was in the, in the, in the realm of sport. It's like, I've played it since I was such a small girl. It was kind of my first love. I, you know, not that I don't love golf. I absolutely love their different sports, similar, but different. And so I was still playing very competitive tennis, but golf and tennis are kind of different. So you know, I was, I, you know, get to do both. And I remember, you know, how golf was still being a, playing a very powerful role in, in my ability to do business and, and facilitate business on the behalf of the companies that I was working for and that type of thing. And, and even for myself, but I remember thinking like, you know, more people should know about this and I, and especially kids and girls. Right. And so I had an opportunity to participate in some kind of, uh, if you will, community golf, grassroots, excuse me, grassroots kind of golf and organization. And I remember that the group with which I was kind of helping, it was, kind of all over the place and, 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 and not in a judgmental fashion, just, if we don't know, oh, and I remember thinking like, well, I could probably do a little bit of research here and figure out some things because, you know, this organization could do a lot of good. They just need a few little, you know, a little bit of, you know, some resources, a little bit of money, a few little clubs here, things this could go. Let me dig into this. And so that's how I began digging into kind of understanding the backstory, if you will, with golf and the organization of golf and that type of thing. And long of the short, it led me to uh, getting, building some relationships with some people who were in the industry. And at the time, the woman at at the time was, uh, I'm trying to think where was she? She was still holding national office. Actually, her name is Deb Vangelo, master professional with the LPGA. We got to meet. I was in at the PGA show, long, long story. 
but we had several great conversations. And I remember saying like, you need to just become a member of the LPGA, which was, I was not thinking about becoming a member of the LPGA. I'm like, okay, hey, well, I didn't, <laughs> that's not what I'm here to do. I'm just trying to learn some things to help and, you know, do some different things. She's like, okay, but it's easier to help when you're inside and then you can help the game grow out. And I'm going, going like, okay. In the meantime, at this point, I have a business. I mean, a full blown and not a side gig. I have a business. I'm a chief operating officer for a business. I mean, I'm like, I don't really know where this fits in because that process is, is quite a lengthy one to earn certification and, and full membership into a professional organization like the LPJ. Year, you know, another year, another year, another year, she's still telling me, you need to kind of do this. And I'm giving deeper consideration to it. But um, we don't have hours to really for me to go into all the details, but I did learn and really gain a deeper understanding of what she had told me is that you can, you, the chances of the opportunities to help begin to make a real difference in this sport can come from someone, not everyone doesn't have to be this way, but, but um, she was kind of like, I kind of see where you're, you're hoping to go with some things, Greta. It, it might be a good idea to become a member. And so I said, you know, to myself, what the hey? So I began that process, which means I was, a, you know, at this point I've been playing golf. I was a good golfer and I could put it together. I mean, I'm used to striking a ball. I'm used to, a, you know, I understand the motion and that type of thing, but I need to tighten it up. And so I said, okay, well, we're going to tighten it up because to become a card holding professional, you do have to uh, demonstrate in a tournament environment that you can produce high level or in the golf world, low scores, right? We have to play along with an, a rather intensive uh, certification program, a process. We go to school to become that golfer. And so I just decided to, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do the dang thing. And I did. And here we are. Man, and So I wasn't born with things. supernatural golf powers. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> start, you know, I didn't pop out the womb, I didn't, you know, and you begin know, swinging at six world. months, none of those you things, there you and go. I'm here. I, I love that, and, and I remember things. hearing or reading at some point here. someone I saying that uh, you have to put in like a thousand hours or something of dedication if you want to be or whatever, yeah. or whatever many hours. But so, you know, and, and I want anyone listening who might be thinking, okay, well, we're talking different levels, right? We're talking, hey, you just, just play it just to be out there and relax and learn something new. And then maybe absolutely, to, absolutely, uh, absolutely. More. And Absolutely. we're going to hop into it a Absolutely. little bit later. You Absolutely. have coaching programs in which you talk to people and stuff about that. Sure. But one of the things I also read and I learned about you is that you're like passionate and you're an advocate for kind of like increasing the uh, view of women um, into the sport for, um, and, and I may be wrong, but for minorities also, but I'm sure you can expand on that. But that's just my take on what I saw. That. But where did that passion come from? Because I can kind of see that in some sports or some industries, you know, someone is so passionate for trying to include women in something, but golf has a whole section for women, almost like WB, uh, NWBA or NBA and WNBA, right? So is the passion more to just get women involved also, but also kind of like, I guess from that, just tell us where it came from. Sure. Well, I think the part one is uh, that, that, that that's a multifaceted question. And I won't, again, I won't take all day with my answer here, but yes. So the, the, I think are you, you mentioned that there's a whole part for women and that I'm guessing you're speaking of the ladies professional golf association, the LPGA of which I am a, a proud member, which is also people don't know this, the oldest professional so, sports association in the world, oldest women's women's exclusively started by women for women. And so there's that. But the reason that I am just so passionate about it is because despite the fact that the LPGA has been around and women have been around since the beginning of time, we know that women have not been very welcome in golf, let alone women of color. And all things considered, we're still very much in the game at a very small level. As I always say, like, I am, this is my, one of my great hopes that down the road, you know, way down the road, there's some, she's, she's a little girl right now, right? She's a little something right now. 
I want her to be, you know, silver haired and seasoned. And she, I want her to be able to say like, you know, I can't, you know, and, it, and I'm not sure I remember her. Oh, wait, her name was this. It doesn't even matter if you remember my name, but I want you to know, and I want to be able to put an imprint on someone that they can do golf and beyond because see, golf serves as a metaphor for so many things we can do in life. But I want, you know, I imprint in helping someone to play golf. You can, you can become an astronaut. You can do anything you want to do, but golf really does help us see that opens the door. If you can do golf, you can do dang near anything. Number one, number two, as a golfer, as a professional golfer, I am at this point, I want to be, I, I don't want to be an exception in the sport. There are only a handful of African-American uh, women professionals in golf. I mean, you don't need all, and this is the truth. You do not, there are two of us sitting here. We do not need all of our fingers and toes to count the African-American women who are card holding professionals. We need a few more of us, right? That's how you normalize things. Uh, you know, when I go out to play one, you know, there, there are others, particularly I live in, 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 in a very diverse city like Atlanta, but it's still not a ton of us. And so I want there to be a day when there's a woman who's a golfer, when she steps onto the tee, maybe she's out playing around by herself and nobody thinks of it. And then when she hits the ball, I don't also, I don't want her to have to, this experience, which oftentimes is like this. I don't think people mean it that way, but they go like, oh, and you can play. Well, what are you saying? Like you're surprised because there's a black woman on the tee that who can, who can actually play. Hmm. Again, I don't think that sometimes people mean it as an offense, but it also speaks to the point that they're just not enough of us enjoying this great sport. I do not, and let me be clear, I do not liken the 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 gravity of the game, because the game, the game of golf to the right to vote in any any way, shape or form but I do draw this parallel. Why do we know that voters often, so, you know, people go through such efforts to suppress the vote because it's a powerful tool. Why have we not been able to play golf? It's a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool. Man, you, like you just it's a powerful like drop some gems here. And I'm just like, and, and as you're talking about some of the things I recall some, uh, things I remember hearing, you know, even to the point of, I don't know how many years ago it was, but like women weren't allowed to be in or enter their masters or, uh, or the, 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 um, the clubhouse or whatever it was. I remember yeah, stories right. back mm -hmm. that ago, a while back. And then even more recently, there was a group of women, I think it was in Detroit, black women playing and they, you know, someone said they were going too slow and they started a whole thing on that. So yeah, I can, I can see how that sport could be a little you you want to get more fingers and toes in there kind of like you were saying i absolutely right, love that right, so right. um now let's say if there's a listener out there who's listening to this right yes. now right. and they are saying you know what wow i'm hearing some great points i'm loving this i i think i would like to try it out you know maybe they can get in contact with you mm -hmm. what are some coaching programs i know we were talking and you said you have uh, some programs that you're implementing that might be new or, you know, how does that work if someone does want to maybe, um, you know, uh, get in contact with you and try to learn? How does that work? Well, first of all, you can always, you know, I, I kind of, you know, feel like I'm the people's coach. So you can always contact, feel free to contact me and ask a question. I think that that's one of the things, you know, one of the ways we're going to change the game. Know that you can get expert, sound expert advice you know, it's not going to cost you anything to, 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 you know, send me a DM, send me an email, that type of thing. I'm happy to help in that regard. Number one, number one, number two, uh, is, is one of the things that makes for an enjoyable time in, in, as a golfer is to have a good foundation. It's like so many other things in, law, in life. So I do encourage people to, you know, be ready to make some form of investment. And again, I'm not saying that you have to go spend a gazillion dollars, but I'm saying that might be your time. That might be targeted towards some specific, you know, program. Like I offer several, like literally, if you just want to see like, does this even make sense? Does that, do I feel like I could do that? It's very basic, you know, like programs. Like I have one that's called, it's totally free. 
the five five day swing setup checkup, right? And it's going through all of the basics to help you. It's me standing there with the golf club helping you understand how we hold it, how we hold it properly, why, how we, you know, move our all those basic things. So that you can just see, you know, you maybe go like, I'm not really right ready to get out there just yet in front of a bunch of other people just to see how you stand and bend and posture, you know, get in posture and that type of thing. But I could do that in my backyard or maybe in my bedroom or something. That's what it's there for, number one. Number two, understand that every golfer was a beginner. You know, yes, you're going to see some people and it's going to sound like the ball is going to go so far and, and it goes exactly where they want it to go all the time and that type of thing. That's just a process. Also, I want to break this myth. It does not take a lifetime to become a very good golfer. And also, just because someone's been playing a long time doesn't mean that they're a good golfer. Just saying. So just know that, you know, many of these things, these myths, these assumptions that we have been loaded with are not all accurate. So there's a space and a place for you in this sport. Love it. And that's what I love about when I hear my guests talking is that inclusivity. I had to make sure I slowed that word down. Tongue twister for me sometimes. But, you know, it, it's that great feeling of knowing that, you know, it's that great and this is what I'm getting from it kind of early into what our talk was also, right? It's not adversarial. I'm not playing against anyone. So I'm just working mm -hmm. to improve myself, right? So here I am. Mm -hmm. I can be on, a, on the green. <laughs> Trying to make sure I get it right. I was about to say the course. But I guess that could be. Fairways. Where are the fairways, right? So. Right, okay. a little long, the, the, the main fairways, strip, we call those the fairways. Yes. The fairways. The, the, the and I could be there, the and I'm not worrying yes. that, you know, he or she hit a shot that was longer than mine. You know, and oh, my goodness, it was got closer. I mean, yeah, like you said, if you're playing, you know, in a tournament or something, that's different. But if you're just out there just beginning and learning, go at your pace. But I also take into account that this could be a great sport for people who may have uh, injuries that they want to still be active, but they can't still run as much. Maybe they were playing tennis or basketball and now they mm -hmm. want you know, suffer an injury Absolutely. knee or something. Hey, you can still walk maybe, you know, or drive that nice tricked out golf. That's court. right. That's right. That's <laughs> so, right. Right. Hey, right. Have you seen right. that? Have you dealt with people? Because I remember seeing oh. on your site once there was someone who did a testimony and said that their hand was hurt and you know, and they couldn't use it or something like that. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that and then we're going to get ready to start to wrap things up. Sure. So, I mean, that was one of the things, right? Golf will accept you as, you know, as we are, right? It, there's a place in the space. As I say, again, I will tell people, they go like, I'm not sure I can do that. I go like, are you breathing? They go, yes. And I go like, I promise you, then that means you can play golf. Golf also has a tremendous um, space what we call for people who, you know, are, you know, are in a different, you know, have different physical experiences. We call it adaptive golf. So you will see there are amazing golfers. I mean, like world-class golfers who may be experiencing limb difference, who do not walk. So, and they, so they use different devices to put themselves in position to be able to move. You blind, deaf, you you see it all and it's, it's some amazing golf amazing golf so the answer to that is yes for those of us who may be experiencing not quite to that extreme but just different you know different injuries is my grandmother used to say live long enough right you know things happen right and i would be I, i'm a living testimony to that because i went for many many to catch up just you wear and tear. And so, um, actually as a golfer, I, I began playing golf. I played golf for, for many, many years as a right-handed golfer. I'm my natural dexterity is left-handed, but I played golf right-handed. And then I had a very bad injury, which did not allow me to play golf handed anymore. So I had to learn how to play all over again on the other side of the ball, as we say. And so now I'm a left-handed golfer. So there's that. I've also not, you know, again, I'm, I'm very comfortable speaking to myself in this kind of life's journey. I've had two hip replacements. So, and those, you know, some have been on my lesson T have seen me in the past, you know, kind of 18 months have know that it's, you know, it's, it's been a process because it, it's, it's been real. And so, but I've still been swinging and hanging and everything like that. Not, not running down the fairways, but walk 
walking and, and, and that type of thing. So know that there is a place for you. And so between, you know, bad knees, bad ankles, bad hips, you know, have seen it all. And so that's one of the important reasons why it can be very important to, to put your faith and trust and with your development with someone who knows what they're doing, because there is, as I like to say, there's a swing for everybody. There's a swing for every body, physical body, because we're all going to look just a little bit different. In all likelihood, you will not look exactly like the people that you see on TV. After all, they are the best of the best of the best. They are that 0.1%. So they are the aberration. The rest of us, we are going to manage our swings a bit differently. That does not mean that you cannot be an exemplary golfer. It just means that your swing is going to be reflective of the space and time in which your physical uh, body is, is tolerant. In golf, this is not a sport. It should not hurt to swing your club. So if you have a back issue, if you maybe have hip, hip issue, wrist issue, a good professional will be able to help you set up and position your, your motion, your swing, so that it is it is congruent with your body and your situation. I absolutely love hearing all of that. And then now, ladies and gentlemen, we are, for all of our listeners, I'm going to spell it out. And for the viewers, you can see we're at Dr. Greta's um, webpage. And I love it. it says, get ready for a lifetime of great golf, right? Play your best game with coaching that's built around you. And that's kind of exactly what you were saying, right? That coach is going to say, let's see what we can adapt um, for you, right? So make sure you go to her website and join the community and reach out. Like you said, DM her is Dr. Greta um, Golf. DR. I'll let you do it. Can you tell the listeners? Yeah, um, yeah it's where Dr. Go? Greta Golf. Sure. DR, like, you know, Dr. DR, Greta, G-R-E-T-A, golf.com. That's my website on to the internets and in uh, social media platforms. That's my handle, Dr. Greta Golf. And you can always, if, if you're a fan of the email, you can just drop me an email at hello at, guess what, drgretagolf.com, right? <laughs> and so again, I'm, I'm very happy to help. I'm hoping that you want to learn. You know, there are all types of ways and I'm excited. I would love to be welcome uh, welcome you to the sport. Also know that it'll be coming out soon. We've got so much stuff coming out, Leon. So it so it'll be a good time for you and your listeners to 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 um, check in on um, on our website and our community and that type of thing. Because also we'll be announcing the details about summer camp too. I didn't even think about when we were talking oh. earlier. It, we're getting the summer, so we have summer camp. It's super fun and everything. It's one of those great ways to get involved in golf, but also. Um, I enjoy golf, but I also know that everyone's not going to obsess over golf. So, you know, you can do golf and other things too. So yeah. we have a lot of cool things coming, ways to get into the sport and stay into the sport, create great relationships, travel, you know, the whole bit. So that golf is, nice. is what yeah. I do. I, I love it. And, and, and I got to say too, golf is one of those sports that I say, these guys and ladies out here like top notch dress, right? They, and the, the shirts and the shorts and everything, you know, shoes, it's like, it's a fashion, fashion golf accessory kind of thing. I just, I don't think I could play because if I'm in, if I'm in those shorts, my calves would distract people too much. I got some big, thick calves. <laughs> so. but, okay. Well, all right. All right then. Well, then you can always wear your golf pants if you want to, but oh, yeah, you know, but right. it, you know, right. yeah, right. Yeah. So there, <laughs> so. there are options, you know, so, you know, some people, some ladies love skirts, some love pants, some love you, know, you name yeah. it, there's there's a way to do it. There's there's yeah. a way to do it. I love that. And I love the fact of what the, the summer camp there. And, and I, I can just, you know, we, we had here recently, there was, um after the Masters, there's a charity event um, that's put on um by, um uh, it just escaped me, Hootie and Blowfish, his, uh, mate, lead singer, he puts it on here. Where oh, yeah, um, Darius um, Rucker. Yes, Darius Rucker puts it yes, on uh -huh. here in Myrtle Beach and uh, a lot of celebrities and stuff come down and everything like that. So I'm, I'm excited, uh, to, you know, to learn a lot more about this. And I am going to get me a club, one club, like you said, I'm going to just start and then I'm going to slowly do one up. club. Yeah. One and, club. And go for there. So I really sincerely appreciate this. Um, I want to ask you just to stick with me for one second. I'm going to close sure. out and then I'm going to get some of these sponsor bills paid here and then I'm going to come right back to you. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much. Very much. One second here. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for tuning in to another episode of J1Q. Just one question. That podcast strictly dedicated to you, helping you bring information, scaling, giving you what you need for when you want it. I appreciate that. And remember, this episode is being brought to you by Hustle. 
77 for those whiskey drinkers out there who grind you deserve to relax why not relax with a nice smooth glass of hustle 77 thank you so very much and remember as i always say keep living while you are still alive Now officially out. Yes. All right. Remix. 